Happy Halloween. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Dave with the Fight Ass Podcast. How's everyone doing out there? Good, good, good. All right. It is a happy Halloween special edition of the Fight Ass Podcast. And um, we got a great show. We have The Lion. We got Sydney Outlaw coming on. And so much we can talk to Sydney about. We had him on... Uh, around around a month ago with the Unicorn Gang, Kayla and Kayla, uh, Harrison and Haracha. This time it's just the man, uh, Sydney Outlaw, coming on the show. It's this week, guys. The BMF title on the line, his training partner, his brother, his amigo, Jorge Masvidal, in the main event, UFC 244. Also, how about his fight, his debut fight for Bellator in the co-main event, Bellator 234, Versus Roger Horta. a um, Just a legend in the sport. So this is a great fight for Sydney. Puts him on the map right away. And there's just so much more we want to talk to him about. It's been a great summer for him. Great fall. Hey, it is Halloween. And thinking about Halloween. And I was thinking about it, it's 2019. And who has been, you know, the scariest fighters of 2019? Who's been spooky? Who's been the monsters? So here we go. Here's I got three runner-ups, and then I got the winner, the Fight Banana Scariest Fighter of 2019. The runner's up. First of all, the welterweight champion of the world, Kamar Usman. The guy's just been a complete monster. Just a a devastating win, a dominant win over Tyron Woodley. And he's just vicious inside that octagon. The man's a monster, welterweight. Just, he's the champ. He's got to be in there, 2019, Kamar Usman. Second, another runner-up is Israel Adesanya. And I know you guys be like, no, nah, he's not scary. He's not spooky. He's kind of funny. He's glim. He's kind of, you know, into the Dragon Ball Z and all that stuff. How about you get into that cage, you lock that door, and you go five minutes with the man. The man is just a wrecking machine inside that cage. Offensive from angles and elbows, and knees, just how aggressive he is, just his fight style, his heart, that fifth round versus Kelvin to win the title. How about the knockout of Whitaker? Israel Adesanya is scary, scary good. Middleweight champion of the world. Man, this was close. I really wanted to make him the fight bananas, scariest fighter of 2019, but he came runner-up. You know this guy is dear to my heart, Jorge Masvidal. And you would think, like, why? You know, and I, I think the the champ deserves the champness. But, guys, Masvidal, the Darren Till knockout. Three-piece in a soda to Leon Edwards. The six-second knockout to funky Ben Askren. The man is a living legend, and we cannot wait for UFC 244 BMF title on the line this Saturday night. But here we go, guys. Here it is. The champ. The Fight Bananas, Scariest Fighter of 2019, Francis Nagano. The Predator. Just his his physique, his look, his aura is just straight up scary. But guys, in 2019, that man's been inside this cage for a minute and 37 seconds. Two wins, two vicious wins, two vicious knockouts, two vicious knockout wins. One versus J.D.S. Junior Dos Santos. The other versus Cain Velasquez. The man Cain is fighting on crown jewel for the WWE. He retired Cain Velasquez. And if that's not scary, I don't know what is. All right, guys. Let's get on the line with Sydney Outlaw. All right, guys, on the Fight Bananas line, the man himself, Sydney Outlaw. My man, how you doing? I'm blessed, man. Can't complain. How are you doing? Man, we're doing great here, brother. We're doing great. Uh, it's a great time of the year. It's Halloween, man. Uh, I And I don't know about you, Sid. Like, I've never been a Halloween guy. I'm, like, super into Christmas <laughs> and July 4th. But now with the two boys, like, and they love dressing up in their superhero gear and all that stuff. Like, man, they're they're really yeah. making me into the Halloween stuff. So, how about you? Are you a Halloween guy? You know what? I am now. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Right. I've been there ever since I got older. I kind of like it even more than I already did when I was a kid. Kind of. Yeah. I didn't really like it that much. I didn't really go out that much. 
you know, got candy, it was always a nasty candy, but now, <laughs> man, shoot. That's man, awesome. Man, you'll, man, you'll get me in trouble, but <laughs> the costume's getting more creative. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh. So, with that said, with, with that said, it's kind of nice, you know? It is, it is. So, what, you got something in, uh, in gear for this year? Or are you gonna, what you gonna be dressing up as Halloween? Nah, honestly, <laughs> I wish I would, but right now, right. I'm gonna focus on the spite. And, uh, just, you know, I like the energy. Everybody else gets happy, you know, everybody else is, uh, is excited so and that gets me like oh yeah you know every you, they give you that you feed off that good energy so it's like no reason to be upset Dom. so i kind of like it you know that's one of the main reasons why i like uh Halloween. that's a great point it really is a great point all right you brought it up man bellator 234 co-main event versus roger horta who's just a you know a legend in the sport an icon that's a great fight for you your first fight in bellator uh the camp two weeks away we're around two weeks away how has been your camp? I know you've been in incredible shape. I see you on Instagram running those stairs, my man. So uh, how are you doing two weeks away, Bellator 234? You know what? I'm doing very, 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 very well. Um, I have some of the best people on the planet not only helping prepare me for this, but uh, to be honest, getting my mind right because everything else that came to the physical part of it, you know, the physical aspect of the sport, I already had locked down, you know. Um, but it's the mindset, you know, the mindset and, and life. You know what I mean? With me, it was always life. Like, fight day, I'm there. But when I left, it was like, you got to maintain your job. You got to maintain your your your, 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 your living situation. You got to maintain that. And it sucked because at the time, it wasn't the best situation for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, hmm. I'm, you know, help. Yeah, it was motivating me. They, they, they motivate me. They make sure I'm calm. They taught me how to. Even though I thought I was good at relaxing and uh, being calm under chaos, now I want to dine in chaos. You understand? Like I, yes. this one. it's like no, I can create this stuff, and you know, like you ever saw that? You ever saw the Avenger Endgame? Oh, I've seen it twenty six times. <laughs> yeah, so it was one scene that stood out to me the best, and I don't, and people don't like it because you know, at the end of the day, you're either a spectator or a gladiator. And the gladiators are a dying breed. Everybody want to be spectators now, right? So it was it was that it was that one scene that gives me goosebumps with Thanos. I'm a Thanos fan because he's a boss. You know, he 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 was doing what he wanted to do on his, by himself, kind of sort of. Right, right, but right. He sat down like when when they got to the Earth, he sat down in the middle of the battlefield, waiting. Yes, patiently. Yes, that 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 is exactly how I portray myself now. Relax calm i don't gotta listen to the music getting part i gotta just be that's who i am you know what i mean i just gotta be that part now i know you guys are saying like oh, as corny he mentioned bringing up a cartoon well that's the best that's the best thing to come to mind right now you know Sid, because you're killing in perspective, it I, you know you're yo you're absolutely i love this and i got so many different ways to go with that for one this thick with that end game thing like how crazy is it like five minutes after the scene you're talking about uh, the girl with all those special powers, kind of, he was, she was with Vision, and Thanos killed Vision, and she's so upset, and she's so, you know, mad, and she's like, hey, Thanos, I'm gonna come after you, and I'm coming with everything I got. Thanos is like, I don't even know who you are. It's like, that's just chilling right there, you know what I mean? That's how you, how you say it, it's boss. Yeah. It's like, he's just straight up thug on him. Yeah. And then, another thing that you just said, and, uh, you know, I know you're an Island Fights veteran, and Jacob Killer Kilburn. After the fight, he's like, man, he he thinks what you just said, like and the person and it's hey, everyone's different or whatever. But the person who's like hitting their chest so hard and is listening to the music and bobbing their head, they're like so amping themselves so up. He's like, he's so scared. He's frightened. He's trying to get into the fight. He goes, me, I have a smile. I, I've worked my tail off yeah. for for 80 straight days. This is just where I can do my work. This is where I can have fun inside this five-minute fight. So that's crazy, like, how you guys are on that level. You're right. It's mine, you know, uh, well, who's that coach, like, uh, John Madden, right? He's like, you know, the sport is 80% mental, 20% physical. It's 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 a mind it's yeah. a mind sport. No, yeah, you're right. I think I think people don't really elaborate a little bit more on that. You know, the people, because like I said, it's a spectator sport, uh, people that are, that are like, that like to talk is getting more attention, right? 
Right. So you're saying people that like to talk, they speak that stuff or getting more attention, again, from the spectators. And it's cool to be a spectator. Obviously, they pay the bills, right? If it wasn't for the spectators, you know, True. I'm not saying anything. If doctors could be spectators. Fighters could be spectators. But the raw gladiators, like the real, like, like, the real gladiators, you understand? They're, they're messing up. When today's gladiators are messing up because they don't emphasize the fact that it, it is a mental part. They got to live the part. They can't go get drunk in. You know, they got to live the part. And I feel like that's one of the things that I that I learned down here at ATT. You got to live the part. You got to enjoy it. You got to wait. It can't wait to wake up. Can't wait. For, like, I can't wait for tomorrow. Like, right. I can't, like, I can't wait. You know, at one point in my life, I used to hate waking up. I used to hate it. You understand? You ever had yeah. that feeling? I'm pretty sure you have that feeling. I had that every day. My man. So you add it up. 365 <laughs> days out of the year, you yes. add that kind of by, like, like, like seven. Seven. Hated it. I never felt. I couldn't wait. I couldn't. I can't even go to sleep. I'm like, damn. I can't wait to see Coach Mike. See, we got the team for you today. Let's go. You know? Said and no. I, I, like I love it. You know? I people, like it. people ask me. And it comes up all the time. I always tell everyone my favorite day is Monday. Monday morning. I love getting up. I love starting the week. I love the grind. I love the process. I love getting into it. Everyone, you know, Friday nights are fun. Saturday nights are usually fight nights, and that's cool. Sunday is our blessed day and all that. Monday morning is we wake up and we grind, and I love the grind. I love the process. So, like, what you're saying hits heart, Sydney. Like, I'm so with you on that. Like, And then people are afraid of the process nowadays, you know? Like, people don't want to do the grind that you're doing and kind of the question, so we, we've been going back and forth. I've been loving this. We can, Sydney, I, hey, we got three hours if you want. <laughs> but <laughs> the mindset, um, is it is it a little bit part of the ATT and the coaches like Mike Brown and Mako? Is it the unicorn gang? Is it a little bit of that FRM family down there? Or is it just a little bit of everything and both? Every It all kind of equals its way out. A hundred percent. And then I want to also say, it's probably throughout life itself, from what would have taught me, you know, like I messed up. Like I was supposed to be, like my career could have probably took off a while ago. But I, you know, at the end of the day, people forgot that I was a kid still, you know, I'm 27 now and I was a kid and I learned. Right. And I harness, I guess, my emotions or, or the way I think or the way I thought at the time. And now I'm a completely different individual. I'm a grown adult now. And I want to say life definitely forged me to the, to the individual I am now. And I say forged because obviously, you know, a, a weapon is, could be forged, right? So yep. I want to say I'm like a weapon, you know? I was forged. And in order to be forged, kind of like in order for the weapon, you got to kind of take it through some hard, traumatic type of experience, you know? Like fire, all that stuff. Me, I've been through it. A lot of hell. And this is a final product. That's it. You know? And, 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 the, and, the, and the nice part that I'm so fortunate in, that the people you see around me now are the assessors. You know what I mean? Right. I have I have Kayla Harrison, who who's who's my who's my scope, you know, on a gun. You get what I'm saying? Yes. I have I have I have a a a, a Kayla Harrison, that a freaking one of a kind, who's my ammunition. You understand? Like I can keep going on and on. Dan Lambert, who's definitely helped me out a lot. Um, I Mike Brown. I was mothered all. I feel, I feel like I'm just like. Excuse my language, but I feel like I'm dick riding because people don't understand like, what the guy has literally done for me. And I've been near a lot of superstars, a lot of superstars, and they didn't give two craps about me. Maybe because they knew about me as a kid and saw me growing. I don't know, but they got I got nothing but love for the um for my old for my role models that I still look up to. Not old role models, my role model that I'm continuing to look up to. Right. But I know a lot of people that didn't really care. Didn't really care. Oh, good luck. You'll get it one day, Sid. They say that to me, bro. I'm in a car. I'm sleeping. Not that, not that I tell people this because they look like they might think I want a handout, but I'm like, I hear this. I heard this two years ago. You think today you two all get it or have my chance one day? Now I understand what they said. Now I'm, I'm understanding what they meant by that. So I want to say I'm very blessed. I don't, I want to say I learned through out throughout life. Understand? Am I making sense? No, hundred percent. Make sure. No, you're hundred yeah. percent. This is man. Like this is the fight bananas podcast, but this is like the gospel right here, Sydney. Like this is it. This is like we're hey, te- this is life lessons. You know what I mean? Like this is beyond the fight. Hey, yeah. you know, we, we, and we'll get into it later. We can say, hey, Mazadov Diaz. We can throw, hey, Diaz has got the length. mazadov has got the street and the heart and the grit. We we will go all there later. Yeah. But all this, this is this is gold. Like this is you know real talk this is just 
getting down to it. Uh, man, Sydney Outlaw, two weeks away. Bellator 234, co-main event. And just like, seems like everything in your life, Sydney. You know, I don't, and I don't want to talk for you and let me know if I'm off base. It just seems like everything in your life is just on this great uh, upward projection. And you're just, you're, you know, you're climbing up the right way, the right process, doing the right things, right cardio, the right strength, the right, you know, coaches, the right people around you, that house, that unicorn gang house. You guys are just a family there. And, uh, I just can't wait for you, uh, you, uh, Bellator 234, for you just to show the world who Sydney Outlaw is. Wow. That means a lot. I can't wait. And, and the sad part is, I mean, I'm not gonna mention like I, I try to uh chase I don't know much in this world. I understand I'm not saying I'm I'm the smartest. I am a survivor. You know, I'm just a I'm just a survivor. I understand I'm just a guy that can adapt to any situation. You put me in a lot li- you put me in a library, I'm gonna be the best librarian that's sort of the smartest guy that walks out. I tell you that much. You understand? Yes. So I'm a I'm a I can adapt to any situation in life. So with that said, I, I I wanted something, so I had to adapt. Like, I had to adapt. I didn't, this MMA stuff, like I said, people see, oh, Pete, he's so big. He's so strong. Yeah, it ain't like I woke up and the day, oh, yep, I'm strong. No, I worked for it. I grind for it. Right. And again, I'm just so blessed and fortunate. Like, I grind, grind, I sacrifice. Me and sacrifice are like best friends, you know? <laughs> like, I, you know, I go walk in people's, you walk in the fight and you're happy and you're confident. And, and you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm like that because the fight camps, like, my coach, my old coach, uh, one of my, my, he's like my father, Rich Slada, he always told me, he, he, he made me watch this Mike Tyson thing, and I never forget. Mike Tyson said, I'm, I'm more afraid of the training camps than I am of the fight. Yep. And I'm there like, you go. huh. Because yeah. our training camp used to be hard when we were amateurs. And I'm like, Coach Rich did, he, he embedded him. He was like, make sure you do not fight bombs. If they fight you bombs, it's because it's a, it's a reason they find you a bomb, or you have to, for a reason. You don't just fight bombs. I'm like, all right, cool. I thought, you know, I thought all my all my guys are tough fighters. You know, you saw me on a car fighting that guy, yep. you know, on a four week notice, and 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 that was supposed to be in front of Dana White, and I didn't get picked. Killed me when Dana White said I'm not gonna treat it like the looking for a fight show because I wasn't there. I'm like, dude, I paid money to be there, and you're not gonna be there. It was the worst feeling ever. And I'm like, you know what? I think I got give up on the. I didn't understand why I was in the, wasn't in the UFC, you know, but. Again, that was like God challenging. You know what I'm saying? And yes, it's I gave you, up mentally. Somewhere yeah. in my brain, it stopped. Something said stop. Like, but something said no. Like it was, it was a battle, literally, in my head. Like something said stop. And we're wasting time. You're young. You can open up a business. You can do this. You can do that. And it's something in my head was like, are you, are you kidding me? Are you going to listen to this fool? And I kept, and I just, I just woke up the next morning, went to the same gym. I didn't care. I just did the same routine. Did the same routine. Three months later, I fight for the CFFC belt. Uh, one, obviously. Um, then obviously, God put in, in, in the plans of Bellator. And I'm like, Bellator? Bellator? They want me? I didn't think Bellator want me. I wanted UFC because UFC, I thought, you know, I, I, I trained for a lot of UFC fighters. So I'm like, well, they probably heard about me. It was probably easier. I didn't even know. I didn't have, you understand? I had no connection to Bellator, right? Yeah, None. I, I, I do. None. And, and that's kind of that's let's go there with it. How about that with uh, Sergio Pettis? That's you know news yesterday uh, broke. He just signed with Bellator. Uh, literally breaking news yeah. tonight, my man. Kat Zagano just signed. Uh, she's in Bellator. Uh, Douglas Lima. You can argue Kat the Zagano? yeah. Cat just signed. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that's what I mean. The Bellator, that's the, really awesome. Douglas Lima. You can argue the greatest welterweight, top five welterweight in the world. He just you know he's the champ now. For it's just. Bellator is putting up the right talent. I feel like they have good mojo too. Like I think they're on an upward projection. I think they kind of. It felt like a two years ago they were just all about that old school, um, you know, kind of past their glory kind of a fight. It, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Like the yeah. guy a little bit past their prime. Now they they got stars. They're creating stars. There's a heavyweight uh, Stephen Mowry. Uh, he's down there, hard knocks down there in Miami. Kids a stud, seven and zero heavyweight. Yeah, soon to be a heavyweight superstar. So they're building people the right way. Um, so, you know, how, how did that Bellator come about? Like you just said, you had no connections there. Was it just was it Abe and uh, FRM just making the right deal for you? I I believe so. My like I said, all glory goes to God first, and uh, definitely I want to give some uh, to Abe, my teammates, probably Frankie, probably I don't know, but he heard about me. Abe uh, reached out, 
Mazadar definitely uh, chipped in. But I want to say uh, most of them probably like Mo. Mo was definitely uh, obviously King Mo the legend himself. He said, uh, "I remember the words he used." He was like, bro, we're going to get you in the military. Trust me. He was, he was he's confident with me. Very. Yeah, he was King confident Mo. with me. And then when I really became a part of the team, he took all the confidence away. He was just happy. He was like, oh, that's it. That's my guy. I like him. That's like him. And then when he came, he was like, bro, that jab was horrible. I know it's all out of love. I know because he needs to push me. But, and I like that. I want I want more to continue to stay like that because it, he's trying to – I understand. He's not – I'm not one of, one of those crybabies. I understand he's constructive criticism is a, a, a – the, the construction part, you know what I mean? That's, 100%. That's how I'm built. Yeah, you can't so have gonna, all gotta, yes men yeah. around you. You never, yeah. you'll never so, grow. So, no, you're right. You're right. Mo, Mo said, uh, hey, you got any 55ers you don't like? I got a perfect guy for you. Obviously, 55 is the, the most popular weight class, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, he didn't say that. Clearly, he did. And the next week, long behold, I'm signed to Bellator. I'm like, no freaking way, you know. I'm not trying to say Bellator don't like Roger. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, I guess they like that little umph. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want and, – and also my manager, a, his exact words was uh, – they were like, well, who do, well, who, who can – is Sydney ready to fight? And he was like, yes. And he was like, don't you dare hold that man hand. Let him run. Like, give him anybody. Give him the, the, the best fighter you got. And wow. obviously, Roger, yeah. you know, uh, was one of them. And, and I'm not a trash talker. I look at fighting different. People don't know what B says. People don't know what none of this little attitude or arguments or, you know, people get angry at people who want to fight. From mm. where I'm from, the, the fighting days are over. You know what I mean? Right. You understand? So, so I don't look at fighting as a way for me to get my anger out. I love fighting. I love it. So if I love you, you're going to be. I love sparring days. I get I get goosebumps thinking about it. I can't wait for this fight over so I can get back <laughs> on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Saturdays. Man, Those I are love my that. favorite days, you know? God. So I, I look at this like I also want to make the message for the kids so they understand like you don't got to be tough. You don't got to do this tough thing. Going to school, going to Harvard, you're tough. You're mentally tough, you know what I mean? Right, Getting your right. doctor, that's tough, you know? And, and people don't understand that, you know? So I'll be gangsters and Oh, that's kind of old nowadays. Now what I really want to I like keep I'm usually trying to get to people is like, this is because you fight will make you tough. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, people can use their talent in the wrong way. But don't get it twisted, you know? Yeah, people can use that, you know what I mean? The wrong way. But this fighting game is how I can express my love. I love fighting. And just because I beat somebody don't mean that person sucked. It was just I was better than that day and I must have loved it more. You know, yeah. from what the from and, and and I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but no, no, you're from what I under yeah, for for what I understand, like I feel like life is like an equal balance. You know what I mean? If you want something, you got to pay for it. If I want a Bugatti, I have to pay for it. In order to get the money, you got to put in the hours at your job to get the Bugatti. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I understand if I wanna that. Win, <laughs> yeah, if I want to win, if I want to win, I if I want to win, I have to do what? Grind. I can't go to the bank and go to put on my ATM my ATM car and pull out a stack of money like hey I want to win come buy a win. It doesn't work like that, Google. You gotta winning is a B. It's a B for real. You gotta you gotta sweat. You gotta run. You gotta enjoy it. You gotta smile. And people like I I love quote oh, better than when I was a kid. He was like, bro, if you want this, you gotta pay the price. I don't want a membership or nothing. You gotta run. You gotta do push up. Your friend going to the prom I my first pro fight, no actually my last amateur fight I believe. I went to the prom. This all happened back to back. Went to prom, graduated, and then fought. I wow. fought the last. I don't know if I graduated, went to prom first, or fought, or 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 went to prom, or I don't know which which order that was. But all in three weeks, bro. Do you understand? I hated that. First of all, my prom date was like, Yo, "This guy is boring." I was I was dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> I was on water. You're cutting you know, weight. Water had to. I yeah. She was like, "This guy is freaking boring." I'm like, I couldn't do anything. Then I had to graduate. My hair was nappy. I smelled like, uh, at the time it was Abilene. I smelled like Abilene because I just got done wrestling. I'm sweating. I had my sweat clothes on my, uh, my, my wrestling shoes. No, actually I had to switch shoes. Like it was horrible. It oh was horrible. Then, as soon as I got, as soon as I walked, my mom picked me up, took me in a car, went to the gym, got back on the trail, my ran. Next day, then we had to weigh in and we fought. That's how, like, I love, I love the process. I, it, Putting I'm getting, in the bro, dues. I'm like, I feel like 
I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. I love Lynn. I no, love me it. too, brother. You're putting in the dues. Uh, what, and I kind of want to highlight one thing you said. I loved it. You said about being tough, and you said about the doctors and Harvard people. Yeah, man, like, tough is just not always just a fighter, right? Tough is a single mom grinding 20 hours a day. They got three kids at home, and they come in, and they're doing what they need yes. to do to provide for their kids. That's tough. Like, that's real talk. That's the real yes. life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I loved it. Um, yeah. yeah, well, man, gosh, you, you're you right. I'm getting goosebumps. People I'm, don't talk about that more. Right. They no, don't. People, I don't. I don't like how people want to talk about that. It's just it's the society we live in. You know, look who praise. Like, I'm not one to talk. You know, and he got like 4,000 followers. The guy I'm about to mention right now, and he got like, what, 2 million? Like, this guy in 6'9", he's a rapper with the rainbow hair. The society is screwed up now. You can't really t- t- tell. Nobody don't care. People don't care. People don't look. I mean, for granted, he probably done some good stuff. But people don't, you know, I see I see a guy. I actually saw a lady today that was very really inspirational. She pulled over. And I'm in Florida. You know, I should, I should, I can tell you, I'm in Florida. I'm driving. I see a lady literally pull over at the light to uh, hand some homeless person, you know, water. She got like like left public in water. I'm like, yo, that something. She's not putting on Instagram. She's just right. doing it because that's that's what society needs more, you know. Yeah. And 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 then I was always I was on the other end, you know. I was on the other end. I was on the point where I used if somebody gave me a gallon of water, shoot, I would have been the happiest boy in the world. Right. I was poor. I was sleeping. I was sleeping with homeless people, and they stunk. Woo. Uh, s- they smelled like uh old construction workers. It wasn't. It wasn't. Like a pleasant smell. I'm sleeping. I'm sitting right on the bench with them, having a conversation. Some of them, no, not some of them. Most of them was crazy. <laughs> Most of them were crazy. Crazy as a mofa. They told me some stories that I didn't want to hear, nor did I care. But nine and ten, I had nothing to do. I couldn't go to sleep. I had to wake up. You know, like right. it was work. It was really, really bad. Some of them are very. Some, some of them prefer to stay out. For sure. You know, You're going to love this story, Sydney. And I've said it probably three, four times on the podcast. And people are probably going to love it, hearing it again. And they're like, Dave, are you telling this story again? And it was just about uh, your story about Bum. And then it kind of connects a lot with you because, hey, Sergio Pettis was there. Anthony Pettis. Maz Vidal was there. Uh, remember it was like five, six months ago, Dean Tool promotion show. They all went to Pensacola Bay. You know, the Pensacola Beach for that uh, grappling match, right? Uh, a, Malky, everyone was out yeah. there. And we went out the night after weigh-ins, and everyone's eating, drinking. You all were Miro. We're all having a great time. Uh, I was there with them, Dean Tool, the promoter. It was just a great night. And we're walking around downtown Pensacola. And, of course, most big city downtowns, there's like there's bums. There's, there are bums laying down around, you know, around midnight, 1 a.m. And Anthony Showtime Pettis. There's no cameras around Sydney. No one's filming it. He didn't say, hey, guys, watch this. He kind of stopped. Yeah. We're all walking in a group, eight, nine, ten of us. Jorge's in the front, and Anthony whips out a hundred dollar bill out of his pocket, and he gives it to this homeless man. And by the time the homeless man, because we're talking, we're we're laughing, we're all talking about the fight game. You know what I mean? We're having a great time. And the kind of the bum woke up a little bit, and he sees Anthony giving him something. And usually, hey, I I, I gave bum money, you know, a dollar, maybe a five. You know what I mean? You had a good week or whatever. He looks at the bill and it's a hundred, and he looks at uh, Anthony. Goes, uh, S- Mister, this is going to change my life. Like this is the start of me changing my life. And like all of us kind of stop. Like Sergio, Yoel, like we're like, wow, did we just witness something? Like we just witnessed, we maybe Ooh. witnessed Anthony Pettis saving a man's life. Wow. Isn't that a good one, man? That that's 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 deep. That's, that's, that's touching. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so, really awesome. So that's that's awesome. The, yeah, that's we need more of that. Man. We need more of that. Right, we do. We do. Uh, that's that's a uh, FRM uh, talking about FRM. A huge weekend. You know, I had to bring this up. Oh my goodness, this is it. Two forty four, MSG NYC BMF. Uh, my man, I know we talked about him a little bit, but what what's this? What's what does Masvidal have to do to ensure this win? Does he just have to be him? Is there something you're like, oh, after the first round or halfway through the first, if you see you liking his clinch game, okay, I feel good about this fight. Uh, what do you think about this epic, epic match at UFC 244? You know, I don't want to seem biased enough. I think Masvidal have to try to lose in order to lose. 
This dude, like, I don't see him losing at all. Right. I mean, honestly, I'm not looking at his credentials, but let's be. You do you think Nate Diaz can? No, come on. No, I. Let's, let's, go, let's go down the list. Let's just go down the list of people. He the two different fighters. Father Dog is actually a prize fighter. He can be champion tomorrow. He's actually good. It's not dick. I'm not like riding. I'm not trying. I don't want to be biased, and of course I am going to be biased because that's the general. But he's a good. Not only because he's a good guy, he's he's good at fighting. I mean, you you know, and I know that he's good. I mean, like I said, let's just compare. Let's, let's just let's just compare the credentials that he holds. You know, right? I just. He he fought Conor McGregor. Nate, Nate Diaz biggest fight with who? Conor McGregor, right? Yeah. He submitted Conor McGregor. Yep. Any real fight fan knows that Conor McGregor is like a against the right fighter. He's just a hype train. He's a contender. And it's two weight it. classes up. Let's just be real with that too. Like at, especially at that time, Conor was really doing a lot of his work at one forty five. Oh, but I just want to. That's another thing. Con, Nate is he he was a fifty five. He was a fifty five that didn't want to cut weight. Right. He's not a big, he's not a seventy pound fighter. He's a guy that just wanna wake up, wake get on the scale. He doesn't want to cut weight. He doesn't want to cut that f- extra five pounds. You know what I mean? Like that whole like Conor McGregor was the same, it was the same size as me. And Conor McGregor had a little bit of weight on him, if you ask me. I mean, mm. that's that's me using this thing called common sense. You know, that's just me. It was because we had fifty five. Nate Diaz looked up and said, Yo, I don't feel like cut weight. And Conor knows that hey, you know, I don't feel like cutting weight. Let's just make it. Make, come on. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just be honest here. No, I'm with you on this. And I'm looking at, his, you know, where, where'd you, uh, did you give him a lot of credit on the Showtime Pettis one he just had at UFC 241? Or did you think it, uh, Pettis was winning until he hurt his ankle? That's exactly what happened. Okay, I like, thought I so too. I I, I'm not. Watch it. Yeah. yeah, no shade at anyone. I, I really thought Pettis was. Uh, controlling the fight, I loved his kicks at the very beginning, and then you can see he it was like he, um, you know, just bad footwork, right, or just the unfortunate footwork, I should say. Pop the ankle kind of sprain right there, and then Diaz controlled the fight. You know, he uh, Pettis didn't have the movement, but before that fight, right, uh, Diaz's last yeah six fights, he's three and three, uh, winning a loss from Connor. He beat he defeated Michael Johnson, Greg Manion. But he lost to Benson Henderson. Oh, I'm sorry, three and seven. Oh, I mean, three and four. RDA he lost, and then remember Josh Thompson with the head kick. Um, you know, around 2013. That's the other thing. And this is what I keep on saying too, uh, Cindy. I don't know if you agree or disagree. You know, Nate. Uh-huh. It's been his fights. He fought Pettis a couple months ago. Before that, Connor was 2016. Michael Johnson 2015. RDA 2014. The exact opposite for Masvidal. You know that he's. The man trains harder than anyone. He's always in, you know, always there in coconut in the gym, and just how he keeps himself busy. I'm talking about Ben Askren this year. He's fought Darren Till earlier in the year, and then 2017 with four fights. You know what I mean? Like he's just all over the place. He's just getting the job done, and he's fought the greatest welterweights and lightweights in the world. So you understand why when people. When people ask me because they know I'm close to my other, I'm going to say that. I'm like, come on. I don't want to be biased. I don't want to answer. But you think about it. Let's do the thing. Let's play this game called common sense. <laughs> Let's just look at it. But, 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 time out. Time out. I do have to say, listen, this sport MMA, you know what I mean? Right. I got it. I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it. No, like, I've been known to be looking at the screen like, what's happened? Did that happen? You know? Like, what just happened? You know? Like, but on paper, you know, if I had to gamble, I'll put my life, my life, my life insurance, all of it, my whole life saving up on my other dog. Yeah, no, I'm but, with you. you I'm know, with you sport, on that. The sport is, you know. Yeah, it's a it's a dangerous sport. Uh, crazy things have happened in the sport. <laughs> Matt Sarah, who's a legend, but defeated GSP uh, during GSP's prime. So anything can happen in the sport. Just a, you know, it is what it is sometimes, but. That's uh, UFC 244, um, my man, Bellator 234, co-main event. I'm just so excited for you. I'm so pumped for you. I cannot wait for this. Uh, I can just, 
I'm excited to see what's next. And I know like like every quarterback after they win, right, they always say that, oh, you know, I'm one game at a time. And I know that's what you have to say. You know what I mean? Sydney, I get it. Uh, mm-hmm. Bellator 234, that's what's in front of you. But I can't wait for the future. You know what I mean? I can't wait for your 2020 and beyond. Uh, just mm-hmm. um, continue success. Um, almost before you go, it is, and it is Halloween. I did something before I got you on air. I talked about the scariest fighters of 2019. Uh, throw throw a name out there. Who do you think has been the scariest fighter in the game of 2019? That actually fought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not fight. No, no. You can whoever you want. Uh, you know, someone, uh, even a coach. You're like, hey, I don't want to mess around with him. Just someone who's like, man, it's uh, I I love hearing the background stories too. So uh, anyone you want. I mean, this guy's sitting outlaw, man. He smiles. He's yes. all happy, but he's a deadly guy, man. It's just, I just <laughs> besides <laughs> him, though, uh, man, a guy that just, hmm, you know what? My wrestling coach, Steve Mako, yeah, you know, he if he if he wrestles you and get on top of you, you're not getting up, right? It's almost like like I felt. I told him I felt like God had just put his hands on your back while you're on top, <laughs> wow. and you're not supposed to move. He's I, wiggling your feet. He's how about like, I'm gonna get out. So I would say Steve Mako, yep. um, how about Marlon, that? Marlon, Marlon, the little sneaky one. Ooh, He'll okay. Get you. Okay. Yeah, Marlon Marana is a beast. Bro. Yeah. How about Kayla he Harrison? Oh, my home girl Kayla, yo, she's a good, she's a sweetheart. She's yeah, she's scary now. She, she, she yeah. wins gold medals and puts it in her sock dry. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> Such an inspiration. She does it all the time, you know. I know. I, I they told her that all her accomplishments. I even I talked to her t- uh, today on Instagram, and I went back and forth with her. And you know, she's one fight away from that PFL and all that money and that championship. I said, "Yeah, mm-hmm. you're you're one fight away from winning that belt, and then put it in your sock drawer." She's like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> she was like, "Yeah, you're absolutely right." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Sydney, man, always a pleasure. I uh, love having you on. We'll have you on very soon. Uh, after you uh, Bellator 234, I would love to get you back on Brilliant. and talk about your travels, uh, talking about flying That's over cool. there, and uh, we'll talk about your W. And, uh, man, just big fan, Sydney. You know that. Um, just can't wait. Very excited for you. Um, anything else? The floor is yours. Man, nothing. Just thank you to all the people that supported me. Like I said, this isn't just – this isn't just uh, me going out there. It's all of you guys going out there. I'm going to be. I'm just a guy. I'm just a vessel. Go out there and have fun, you know. I'm going out there and make you guys proud. I'm going out there and just, you know, go out there and try my best. Actually, I tried my best every day when I woke up. So now it's time for me to go show it. That's this is the easy. This is not even the easy work. This is the fun part. You yes, know, sir. For me, at least. Yes, sir. But, um. um all glory goes to God, but he can't complain about anything else, man. And uh, thank you guys for your time, and please watch. And hit me up after the fights. Hopefully, face on me. Or, you know, say, say, you know. Yeah, we'll do a Skype. Some love. We'll, we'll do a Skype. We, we, we want to show the world your mug after that fight, how clean you're going to look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my man. That's awesome. Appreciate you, Cindy. We'll talk to you real soon, brother. No problem. Hey, God bless you. Thank you, boss. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Wow, what a great talk right there, guys. It was Sydney Outlaw. Man, I loved it. It wasn't even just a fight bananas talk. It wasn't just a fight game talk. We talked about life. We talked about real life. What a great episode we just had with Sydney Outlaw. Make sure you give my main man a follow on Instagram, Sid Outlaw MMA. Give him a follow, Sid Outlaw MMA. You guys can follow us on Fight Bananas Official on Instagram. Make sure you like the page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Fight Bananas, of course, the mother site, FightBananas.com. Wow. And, of course, subscribe to the Fight Bananas YouTube page. Give our sponsors some love and still nutrition. We're talking about that pro team. Beautiful, man. On the website, nstillnutrition.com. They have this great new picture, great new bios of their pro team. I'm talking about fighters like Mike Beast Boy Davis, Lucas Alexander, Brock Weaver, Alex the Spartan Nicholson S D Dumas just what a great uh, Jessica Borga wow and still nutrition give them a follow give them a like make sure you buy their um you know all their supplements great great stuff at nstillnutrition.com 
man, what a great show. I'm so pumped. I hope everyone has a great Halloween. Um, we will here at the Fight Bananas family. We hope you guys and your family have the uh, best time ever. Be safe out there. Take care of your friends. Take care of your neighbors. And uh, just stay bananas. <laughs>